All right. Um. Now we move to the section three of this chapter. Now in this section, we are going to um find the equation of circle for various given conditions. Now, they might give you different things, and uh, we use those ideas to find the equation of a circle. Now we start from the now there are mainly four kinds of um given conditions. We start from the easier. To the more creative ones, so the easiest, the most straightforward is that uh, you are given the center and the radius. For example, you are told that uh, we want to find a circle with center at two minus three, for example, and the radius equals to two. All right. Now, now you just directly apply the standard form. So we have x minus two square, and y plus minus negative three. So that's y plus three square equals to two square. The radius being two. All right. So this is it. You can give the equation of the circle as a standard form, right? If need be, you expand it to the general form. It's up to the requirement of the question, right? But that would be, you know, given center and the radius. That would be the equation of the circle, all right? Now sometimes you will not have the uh, radius directly, but uh, you know it's only one step away. Say for example, the center is at two and minus three. It passes through. The point one one, for example, right? It passes through one one. It doesn't tell you how long the radius is, but knowing that the center is uh two and minus three, it passes through the point one one. So um, we can also find the circle from here, right? This is the uh center. Oops, I'm sorry. This is the center. All right, and the radius will be like this. And all right. So we can have the radius ah、uh, between the center and one one, so the radius will be um. You know we can set up the ah、uh, equation, the formula for finding the radius. This is square, and this is square. So what the two points are? The two points are two and minus three, and one one. All right. So from here we know the radius will be um. Square root seventeen. All right. So the equation of the circle will be x minus two square, and y plus three square equals to the square root of seventeen. Take the square, and simply that is seventeen. All right. So that would be the equation of the circle, in the standard form. All right. So this is the most straightforward one. Directly given the center or radius, or indirectly in some other ways, right? Like ah.、Uh, Number four, I say sometimes you have to improvise based on different conditions, but this is the easiest one, given the center and the radius directly or indirectly. Okay, so this is number one. Now number two, now this is the more difficult one. Um, sometimes you are given three points, and we use that three points to fix a circle. All right, so we want to find the circle that pass through. Find the circle. Now there is only one circle going through any three given points. Find the circle. Ah,、uh, passes through. The three points are P, ah、uh, minus two and three. We have Q, ah、uh, minus seven and minus two, and R two one. All right. So these are three points. We want to find the equation of the circle going through these three points. Now there are two methods we can do that. One is through algebra. Algebra, um, we don't need the graph for this one, right? It's entirely doing it through equations. So, you know, every circle. This is from the general form. You know, every circle. The general form will be um x square and y square and dx. I don't know what d is. We are going to find this out. We are going to find out e, and we are going to find out f. All right. So the circle will be x square and y square and dx and ey and f equals to zero. Now. There are three unknown constants d, e, f in this equation. So happen there are three points. All right. So we can put p, q, r respectively into the equation. So we have four and nine minus two x a、uh, minus two d. I'm sorry. Minus two d and three e and f equals to zero. All right. So that is one equation. All right. From there we obtain um what's that? We obtain um two d minus three e minus f equals to thirteen. So this is equation number one. Now similarly at q at r, 
we have an other equation right at q at r we can obtain all together three equations three equations for um, d e and f so we have 7 d and 2 e minus f equals to 53 all right we have a minus 2 d and e and f equals to 5 I'm sorry, I made a mistake in the last one, right? This one shall be um, 2D and E and F equals to minus 5, right? I leave it to you um, for the red step, uh, the intermediate step. How do we uh, arrive at these orange equations, all right? So now we have a free, free by free system, free unknowns, free equations. Now, now we don't have much experience solving this one, so you might, um, you know, you might wish to... Um, pause the video and try to solve it on your own all right but you know anyway it can be solved upon solving if you have three equations three unknowns you can solve for it upon solving you have d is 4 e is 4 f is um i leave it to you to how to figure it out how to solve for it all right you may wish to pause the video and actually try to do i uh, try to solve it on your own so you have d e f equals to 4 4 and minus 17 so the circle is the circle is x square and y square and 4x and 4y minus 17 equals to 0. All right, so that is the first one. We solve it by algebra. We don't need the graph to do that. It is entirely in algebra. All right. All right, so that is the algebra method. The second is the geometry method. The second one is a geometry method. Geometry, all right. Now, we know that given any three points, say the points are P, Q, and R, all right, this is P, this is R, this is Q. We know that the perpendicular bisector between P, Q, we can find the center on this dotted line. The dotted line will contain the center. Right, if it is the perpendicular bisector between PR. At the same time, we can draw PQ and we got the perpendicular bisector of the PQ. All right. Between these two points, we can find the center. We can find the center. So let's say uh, this is called uh, L1. Or L1 is the perpendicular bisector between P and Q. And let's say this is L2. L2 is the perpendicular bisector between oh L1 is the perpendicular bisector between PR I'm sorry and L2 is the perpendicular bisector between PQ all right and the center will be the intersection of these two perpendicular bisectors now this is a geometric property of the circle it's based on the geometry of the circle all right because we know this point the point from circle to perpendicular to the chord will bisect the chord all right, so we use geometrical method to find the perpendicular bisector between P R. So we get the midpoint, say this is called M1, all right? M1 is the midpoint between P and R. And M1 will be um, between P and R. So M1 will be um, 0 and 2, 0 and 2. We have the slope between P R. The slope between P R will be um, like this, all right? The point P will be minus 2 and 3. Okay, this is point P. Point R is 2 and 1. So we have the slope is 1 over 2 between P R. So the slope of L1, L1 is perpendicular to P R. So the slope of L1 is minus 2. Oops, no, oh no, this is minus 1 over 2, I'm sorry. This is minus 1 over 2, and the slope of L1 is 2. All right, so with this information, with this information, we can use pawn slope form to find L1. L1 will be, um, now I skip some step here. L1 will be 2x minus y and 2 equals to 0. I leave it to you to figure it out. How come M L1 is like this? Is that right? Okay. Okay, so similarly, we can also do L2. We find the midpoint. All right, this is M2, the midpoint between P and Q. M2 will be um, minus 9 over 2, 1 over 2, all right? If you have problem, you can pause the video and think about it. Why 
M2, the midpoint between PQ is like this. All right, so that we have M PQ, the slope between PQ will be like this. P is this point, and Q is minus seven and minus two. All right, so the slope of PQ is a one. Therefore, the slope of L2 will be minus one. So likewise, we do use this information to get the equation of L2. The equation of L2 will be um, x and y and 4 equals to 0. So that is another equation. Between L1 and L2, we can solve for the center. We can solve for the center between L1 and L2. Upon solving, we have the center equals to minus 2 and minus 2. Once again, you can pause and try to do it on your own. Once you have the center, you can also get the radius. The radius is between P and C, all right? Noting that the center is minus 2 and minus 2, you can also get the radius. The radius is the distance between CP or the distance between CR or CQ, all right? Um, that amounts to 5, all right? The, 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 the radius is 5 units in this case, I believe. If you have this information about the center and the radius, you can get the equation of the circle will be x and 2 square, y and 2 square equals to 5 square. This is the standard form, all right? And I think it agrees with the algebra method that we get with the, um, the, the, get, we get the general form of the circle. All right, so brief recap, there are two methods. We can do it by algebra, set up three equations and solve for three unknowns. We can do it through um, geometry to find the two perpendicular bisectors and getting the two perpendicular bisector, the intersection will give you the center. All right. Now, there is a third perpendicular bisector actually, the perpendicular bisector between QR. All right. You can also try to use this one, L3, L1 and L3, L2 and L3, doesn't matter. As long as you get two perpendicular bisectors, the intersection will give you the center. So this is the second part, all right, the second part. Uh, we did the first part, given center and radius. We spent most of the time talking about the second part, given three points. Now, the third one and the last one in this chapter will be um, um, using axis as tangents. Now, this one is quite simple, but uh, it's very common, I have to say, uh, in common in the uh, examination rather than the second one, rather than given three points. Axis as tangents. All right, so um, now the basic idea is something like that. If you have one of the axes as the tangents, like you have a circle like this. Okay, circle, right. We have a circle like this. All right, so it is using the y-axis as the tangent. The y-axis tangent. Suppose the center is h and k. Center is at h, k. And y-axis as the tangent as a tangent, one of the tangents, all right? From this, we can gather, we can collect the idea that the radius equals to h, the x-coordinate, all right? Because this is h and this so happen to be the center. So we have radius equals to h. On the other hand, if it use the x-axis as the tangent, right? So the circle is like that, right? Once again, the center is h and k, oops, here. The center is H and K. So center is H and K. X axis as tangent. Then guess what? The radius will be K. The radius will be K. Alright, the Y coordinate will be the radius. Alright. If it is not in the first quadrant, alright, so once again you have to improvise on this. If it is in the second, oops. If it is in the second quadrant like this, all right. So this is h and k, all right. So how about the radius? The radius will be this one, and that will be h. But knowing that h is a negative number in this case, so the radius will be minus h. All right. You have to improvise on the plus and minus sign of h. But um, anyway, the idea is like that. The idea is like that. All right. So this is about axis as tangent. Let me quote an example for this one, all right? Okay, suppose we have a circle, it's like this. All right, let me draw a better one. 
right? Suppose the circle is like this. Oh, it used the um, x axis as the tangent, and the center is 4, 1. All right, so what is the equation of the circle? If the center is 4, 1, and it used the x axis as tangent. Now, actually, all we need is to find the radius because we have the center. All we need is the radius. From the uh, previous analysis, we know that the radius equals to 1. All right. So we can directly have the equation of the circle like this. x minus 4 squared minus 1 squared equals to 1. Don't forget the square. All right. So that would be the standard form. You can change it to the general form if you have to. All right. There's another thing about uh, the relation between the axis and the circle. Now, um, okay, this is the uh, a, a coordinate axis. We have a circle like this, right? Now, it is not using the um, axis as the tangent, but rather there's a chord here, right? For example, this is a chord. The y-axis is one of the chord. Um, say if the center is at 2, 2, all right, 2, 2, and the length of the chord is 6 units, 6 units. So once again, we can exercise some geometry the radius is r, and now this is the most important thing. The distance between the chord and the center. How long is this purple line? This purple line will be 2 units long, right, because of the 2 here. This purple line will be 2 units long. And the length of the chord, we know that um, the purple line will bisect the chord into two sections. So the chord will be 3 and 3. So once again, we can get r equals to 2 square and 3 square take the square root, and that is square root 13, all right, square root 13. So we have the equation of the circle is x minus 2 square, and y minus 2 square equals the square root of 13, and take the square, or simply just 13. All right, so that is once again the standard form. All right, so this is the third part of, of this section, using axis of the tangent. It seems simple, but it is very popular in the examination. All right. There is another assignment um, uh, about this one, about how to find the uh, equation of tangent from various given conditions. So that is the end of part of section three in this chapter. There are two more sections in this chapter. All right. Goodbye.